Let's take a look how we can animate shader properties in DAS Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with DAS Studio. On today's episode I'm going to have a look at how we can animate shader properties of our objects inside DAS Studio. This is a feature that I've had many questions about, yet it isn't natively supported in DAS Studio. However, a clever product by Alvin Bemar called a Bass can do it. Let me show you a slightly creepy scene that I've prepared earlier to show you what it can do. So I have a sphere object on the left and I have a plane object on the right. And on the sphere object here, I'm animating the horizontal and vertical tiling properties of a black and white shader that I've applied there. So the shader stays the same, but the X and Y tiling or the stretching rather is animated here. And you can see the timeline whizzing by. It works quite beautifully live in the viewport. On the right hand side, I'm doing something very different. I'm replacing an image texture on a per image basis, not so much on a per frame basis, but Abbas is clever enough to say, hey, I've got a three second animation here. I've got five frames and I'm going to have to space them out evenly from here to there. If I had 50 or 60 images, it would do the same thing on the fly. So that's quite nice if you had like an image sequence that is 100 frames long, but you want to display them in the space of 160 frames in your animation animation, then Abbas is clever enough to just, you know, space them out evenly. Let me show you how to set this up from scratch. I'll leave a link to the product in the description of this video. This is what it looks like by Alvin Bemar. And it can do quite amazing things and can do VDB animations as well. We're going to look at that in a different video. But for now, let's just recreate what I've done here and you know, see how we can work with Abbas. I'll go and create myself a brand new scene. I'll leave my timeline open here. I might give that a few more frames, let's say 80 or so, just so that we have something here, 80 frames. And let me start with that sphere and the animated black and white shader. So it'll work on any surface property of any of your objects. I'll just use a sphere primitive here that looks like this. And I'm gonna go and move it up over the ground, something like that. It doesn't really, you know, orientation doesn't really matter all that much. I'm gonna go and select its surface by heading over to the surface property. And it has one that's called default here. And with that selected, you can also use the surface selection tool, of course, and then select the surface that you need. Then I'll head over to my presets tab here and under shaders, under iRay, I'm gonna find something Maybe like a pattern, a bit like what I had earlier there, just so that we can discern what's happening. Perhaps I'll use this one here, the monochrome black 26. There we go. That's, that's interesting. That's highly detailed. Maybe this one here, monochrome black 27. There we go. So if I were to go back to my editor tab and expand the default surface, I can animate any of these properties. So like a base color value, for example, or an emission value or the metallicity value of an object, if I wanted to do that. I think just to make this, or the opacity value as well here, the cutout opacity, I could go and animate that and make an object visible or invisible over time. That works. So any of these properties can be animated. Let me stick with the horizontal and vertical tiling here that's set to four by default and maybe if i go and increase that to maybe one make that a bit bigger from four to one let's do that let's do that four to four to one just as a conceptual thing here here and then over here as well that's gonna that's gonna be nice and freaky maybe just the vertical tiles let me do that so in order to use a bass it's a plugin so you have to go and register it when you download it and install it you can head over here to help about installed plugins and then you get a long list of things that are installed with your installation of DAS Studio, one of which will be a BAS and you pop in the serial number that you find on the website on your account. There's a section with serial numbers, grab that one out, copy that up, put it into DAS Studio, restart DAS Studio and then a BAS will be registered and working. For it to work, you can bring up a new tab here under window panes and there's a bass at the very top here and mine is docked conveniently on the right hand side here and it'll come up with a few options we only need those once and of course you only need to do the registration process of the plugin once so with my sphere object selected here on the abbas tab i'm going to go and create an animated shader 
for that. I can call it anything I like. I might call this one here sphere animation just so that I know what that is. Hit return and then it'll create this extra node here. If you want to keep it nice and tidy like I do, I prefer to left click and drag that onto the object that it's animating. It's not strictly necessary, but you know, it's one of those things that I, I like to do to keep things tidy. So we need to do all this because Dash Studio natively does not animate anything that is found on the surfaces tab. It can't do that. So what Abbas does with this new shader here, if I select that and head over to its parameters tab, if I go and expand this out, I can see that I have one heading here that's called Abbas. And then underneath it, I find all the surfaces that my object has that it's looking at. So this is called default. These are all the properties that my sphere object had on the surfaces tab, but because they're on the parameters tab, we can now animate them. And that is very cool. So in my case, I want to go to the geometry section and then to the tiling, and then I'm going to go and animate maybe the vertical tiles here, as we said. So if I adjust this here, nothing is going to appear in the viewport just yet, but that's because we need to enable this shader first. So on a bass here, let's go and click enable. And then we can go and set ourselves some keyframes on this that will then act as a proxy object for my sphere object. So back to tiling. Four is probably a good idea, but in order for this to create a keyframe down here, I'm just going to have to go and wiggle the slider a little bit. That's just how Dash Studio works and creates automatic keyframes. If I don't do that, this property doesn't set a keyframe. Make sure that when you go to the timeline here that you show other options in this types menu here. By default, I believe it's translation, rotation, and scale that you see here. But for a bass to show us the keyframe values, we need to go over to other here so that those show up. So on the first frame, we already have a keyframe. Now I'm going to go move my playhead. So to say frame 40, and there I want to adjust the vertical tiles to be something like, you know, maybe two. Let's do that. And we can see that keyframes popping up here. If I go and left click and drag my playhead, I can see that a bass is now taking care of this movement here. And then perhaps at the end of my animation here, maybe frame 80, I'm going to go make this four again so that we have something like a pulsing animation. Notice that when you add this value here, it does not show up in the viewport unless you move the playhead. And only then will the proxy properties be calculated, I guess. There we go. That's that. If I go and play this back, I've got this nice, weird animation of a shader property that I could previously not animate. So very cool. Looks like it's breathing. You can do the same with any other property on the surfaces tab now or on the parameters tab. Say if we wanted to make the object disappear over time, let's go to my geometry cutout menu over here. So that's set to one. Let's say it's completely visible at the beginning here. Let's go and wiggle the slider so that that sets a keyframe on this property. And then we go to the very back here, at which point we're going to make the cutout opacity nil. And once again, once we move the playhead, the thing kind of disappears and it'll then go and appear over time. So that kind of looks really, really creepy there. Uh, it also, yeah, there we go. Very, very creepy that. <laughs> so have fun with whatever you can come up with and animating your shader properties there. And Bass has a lot to offer. So let's have a look at how we can go and make our image sequence appear. That's nice if you have a monitor in your scene and you want to have something moving showing on there. Let me go and delete my sphere and bring in a plane primitive. I'm going to make sure it stands up. So I'm going to not use Y positive. I'm going to choose Z positive here. And because my image is slightly four by three, I'm going to go and stretch it out a little bit like so. There we go. Once again, to make this happen, we go over to a bass and create an animated shader to begin with that creates this. I'm just going to leave it as animated shader. And this time I'm not going to parent it just so that you see it doesn't have to be parented. And on my animated shader object, I'll go and head over back to the top heading in the parameters tab here. I'm going to go and enable it first of all, but I'm also going to enable something else here, which is the files animation. So that's a new property that when you enable that new options come up here and it has this completion slider. It has something else, the 
completion linear interpolation. And that is basically saying when I interpolate from the beginning to the end of my image sequence here, do I want to do this linearly, which is the default, which is good, or do you want to do this logarithmically? So speed up, then slow down towards the end. So you probably want to leave this on, but you know, experiment with it. The completion slider is there so that you can say this is where this animation starts and at 100% this is where I want the animation to end. So you could have something that for the first five seconds of your animation nothing happens and then at five seconds an image sequence is being played up until frame so and so at which point it's 100% and then you can do something else with your animation. That's what that's for. But the added side effect is that if I had something like my, in my case, an 80 frame animation and I only have five frames of an image sequence, a bass will go and interpolate that. Let's make it happen. Under my default surface, I'll go to my base channel now, and in base color, I'm gonna go and pick a picture, like my creepy eye blink animation here. Let's do that. That is here. This is what it looks like. There's one peculiarity that a bass wants to have a kind of four digit image sequence number at the end. So my all my files are called the same thing except for the last four digits. So it's called I0001, 0002, 0003 and so forth. If those are not padded accurately over the course of your animation, then a bass isn't going to work with that. So you have to go and rename these things. But there's tools for that out there. You can use the command line, you can use the bulk rename utility and so forth. Let me go and select my first image here, the eye blink. That should then eventually show up as soon as I wiggle that slider. There we go. And that's the first image shown on my object. Let me go and slide my playhead forward to say frame 30. And at that point, I'm going to go and select the top level a bass again. And I'm going to go and crank the completion slider up at that point. So left click and drag that to 100%. And then it does actually set a keyframe. It's just not showing up, I don't think, with does it work with aliases? Yeah, okay, for that you have to click this aliases option here. So other and aliases need to be enabled for a bass to show you all the keyframes here. Now I have my keyframe. And now if I left click and drag, you can see that actually my completion slider isn't working. And that's because, as I said before, I need to wiggle that on the first frame. So let's go and make that, make sure it's zero on the first frame. And now if I left click and drag, you can see that my image slider is in fact counting up as I move my playhead. Sadly, what isn't happening is that it's ch not changing the eye blink animation that I had hoped it was going to do. I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't do that. Let's investigate. Oh, okay, so when this happens, I've had this before. When this happens, just switch this off here. Enable files animation, just switch this off and then on again. And then sometimes it works afterwards. And it does in this case. Okay, so often this doesn't happen, but sometimes when it does work, just switch it off and on again. It's just like computers, isn't it? You're, you're going to be fine. So then my image animation is shown on on my timeline here. Very cool. If you wanted to split this out, you can go and move the keyframe up, or you can just go and change the total duration of your animation. Like if I go and do this to 41 now, then I get this effect and it'll keep looping and looping. So yes, very convenient the way you can animate an image sequence that way. And you can use this in conjunction with the other properties. So I could kind of move the eye from left to right if I wanted to do that. And by the same token, you can also use this system for VDB animations. But we're going to look at that in another video. For now, you know how to animate shader properties with a Baz. As I said, I'm going to leave a link to the product in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.